why make YouTube videos? Well, I'm a Gen Xer, Generation X, so that should tell you most of why I make YouTube videos. I come from a time I learned to work on cars back in the 80s and there was just no sources available. Something simple like putting in this headlight bucket. As simple as it is, it could be challenging. You gotta know where to put the spring and where to put the clips. And something this simple would have been really tough because if the manuals back then were very expensive, they were hard to come by. You had to find somebody that had done it before or at least take one apart and look at it. You had to go out and buy something like this Chilton's auto repair manual, 1973 to 1980, and it covered most vehicles. So this had everything in it. It had uh, Chevrolet, Cadillac, Buick, uh, Bobcat, which is a car, a Mustang, Aspen, Barracuda, all the way through the alphabet, American Motors. This had a little bit of everything. A lot of stuff crammed into just a few pages. But this is where you had to go find yourself. But there's not one picture in here. You can see the front end of the car, not one picture in here that would help you find something like something as simple as putting that headlight bucket in. You, there's an auto body section in the back, but it's, it's just very limited. To make a long story even longer, when I was starting work on cars and different things, there was no Google. There was no Facebook, no YouTube, nothing. The only way you had to get it was you had to read or you had to know somebody. So you would go hang around the parts store and ask questions to the guys at the counter. A lot of those guys that worked at the parts houses were mechanics at, at some time or another. They were pretty knowledgeable or you could wait on people to come in, wait on a greasy mechanic to come in and ask him if he felt like fooling with you. He'd give you the information you were looking for because most mechanics... Worked on every type of car then. There were no specialists. Everybody worked on everything. You worked at a dealer, you worked on them all. And that was pretty important. So when I started looking around and working on cars, and, and I would work on a new car like an electronic, electronically controlled vehicle that I had no idea about, I would do the research, and I wouldn't be able to find stuff. Like that Chevy Cruze that we've got, one of our most popular videos is a, no, is a crank no-start Chevy Cruze. And it's got thousands and thousands of views, and it's a simple, common problem that nobody had addressed on YouTube. So I made a video about it. Tools, I bought several different kinds of tools. I try to buy modern tools for the construction trade and use those tools, but there were no, unless you, you go on YouTube or anywhere on the internet, you would find somebody at a trade show, show demoing the tool but there'd be nobody on there actually using it for like a year. So I started using them a year and then putting tested tool reviews on the internet of every tool that I bought, I would use it a year. I would unbox it in one video and then use it a year, then go back and do a review on it, the pros and cons. And I really like that. And the problem I had when I first started YouTube is I never had a niche. And that's a big word. Remember that word. Everybody that work, that starts a YouTube channel needs a niche. You need to begin somewhere in something that's going to draw a lot of interest. Uh, business and finance draws a lot of interest. I have no knowledge in that. I've worked on cars. I went to trade school to be a mechanic whenever I was in high school. And I've worked in the industrial part. I, I, not really in the mechanics trade in the industrial part, but working with industrial machines and, and industrial packaging so I ha I'm kind of mechanically inclined, but anybody can do, if you can find somebody with a really good YouTube video, anybody can pretty much carry out the process. If one man can do it, or woman, then someone else can do it. It, it doesn't matter, You don't be shot down because it looks complicated. Sometimes it takes complicated or expensive tools, but uh, at a lot of these parts houses, you can go get these specialty tools they call it a rent basis, but you're really buying the tool that when you get done with it, you take it back, get your full price of your money back. So don't be discouraged. Like the Ford truck that I did recently had to have a specialty tool to put the parts on it, but I was able to buy it pretty cheap online, but you can also buy it at the parts house and take it back and get your money back. But I'm rambling on about something, why I make a YouTube channel, because the reason I did it is... If I was working on a piece of equipment or a car or doing construction on my house and I could not find 
the information I was looking for, I would go and make a video about it. Now, I'm learning, so what's helped me a lot is when I'm doing these videos and I'm out there putting the information in the video that I think that is right, you guys in the comments will come back and correct me and say, no, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it the hard way. It's harsh criticism and it's hard to accept sometimes, but when you look at their point of view and, and these guys have probably been using this tool their whole life, they probably know what they're doing, know what they're talking about. And they're not trolls, they're just telling you, look, there's an easier way to do it. And I take that advice and I try, every time someone messages me and asks me for advice, I try to give advice and I also try to respond to the people that are helping me and thank them for the help because a lot of times if I learn something or they see something in the video that I miss, that's good information. I can use that. So making a YouTube channel for me, even though I didn't make a niche, I've made over 100 videos and I'm trying to move more towards the automotive field to create myself a niche, but I've really shot myself in the foot because YouTube algorithm has not pushed what I do because it's not niche related. It's not, it didn't start off directly automotive. It didn't start off construction. It didn't start off heavy equipment. It was just a little bit of everything uh, peppered in together. And I'm paying for that. The reason I say I'm paying for that is uh, I've been over the, doing this over two years and I'm still not monetized on YouTube. Lots of people get monetized within months. You gotta have 4,000 watch hours, which is harder for some people to get than the 1,000 subscribers. Well, I've got thousands and thousands of watch hours, but I don't have the thousand subscribers yet just because I've not, I didn't start off with a niche. I didn't start off with a specific audience. I kind of scattered it out and threw it out, threw it at the wall to see what would stick. And a lot of it didn't stick. Some of my videos aren't any count. A lot of my videos aren't any count, but they're about things that I wanted to have out there on YouTube in case someone else ran into the same issue that I had. So they meant a lot to me. They might, may not mean a lot to the general public out there, to the world, they meant a lot to me. So I hope this is not misleading in any way. This is not a video to help you get monetized on YouTube. But then again, then again, it might because if you follow specific rules that YouTube has and try to create yourself a niche and then stick to that, you may be successful, way more successful than me. I have a lot of videos, a lot of viewers, a lot of watches, but I, I make no money. So... I'm kind of suffering for that, but uh, it's not hurting me. I'm making the videos because I want to. I didn't get on here from day one to make money. I got on here to help people like me that were trying to learn. I hope that makes sense. I'm not trying to get out there and just throw... A lot of people put these crazy captions on their videos that are clickbait, and I've not done that. I've made a few funny, what I thought were funny type little clips, little shorts, and they've done really well, but you don't make money off that. You don't, I did get a lot of subscribers the last short that I did. It was kind of funny, a little, a little spicy. It shouldn't have been as spicy as it was, but it's out there and it done well. And uh, I don't do TikTok. So that's, guess that's my version of a TikTok short, but uh, you can get subscribers by doing shorts. You can get subscribers, but uh, I have my 4,000 watch hours. I just don't have, I've got 860, I believe, subscribers, which is great. And I appreciate and thank every single one of you. But my, algorithm, my analytics says that 99% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So that means it's just being spread out everywhere because I'm not appealing to a particular audience that want to see reoccurring videos. I'm just hitting it every now and then with something that somebody was interested in, and that's it. So take my advice. Don't take, don't do what I did. Uh, do it differently. Uh, carry yourself a little differently. Find that niche, no matter what it is. If it's, uh, if it's doing makeup tutorials, if it's gaming, find it and stick to it. If you want to branch out and do other things, create yourself another channel. And... Even though my videos, I think they do pretty well, and I got a lot of people watch my videos, but I don't make any money, oh well. But uh, I hope if I've helped one person, then everything that I've done over the past two years has been worth it. If I've helped you in any way, hit, hit a like, comment, or subscribe. If you want to subscribe and see the different things that we do, or you don't have to watch videos at all, but subscribing would help me a lot. And I do appreciate that. I appreciate the time you guys have spent listening to me ramble on today. 
I appreciate everything that you guys do, the subscribers and non-subscribers. And thanks a lot, you guys, and stay clean, everybody.